Hi, my name is Jason and I'm an application engineer here at 3M. In today's video, we're gonna to try to answer your questions around compounding with a random orbital polishing system. Before we get started, I just wanna mention a couple of things. First is we wanna make sure we're always wearing the proper protective equipment. In this video, I'll be wearing nitrile gloves, a respirator, hearing protection, as well as safety glasses. The other thing I wanna mention is this video is intended for professional use. So you technicians actually out there in the body shops. If you have any questions on warranty or other safety information, be sure to check the link in the description below. All right, let's get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is random orbital polishing itself. So if you're new to random orbital polishing or you're coming from a traditional rotary type system, there's gonna be some key differences to keep in mind. The first is how the business end of this machine is actually rotating. So in a traditional rotary, it's just gonna be spinning. Um, so the compounds, pads, everything designed for that system are not gonna work as well is with a random orbital system. So we wanna make sure we're using the proper pads and the proper compounds for this system. Again, because of the way it's spinning, the way that we preload the pad, the way that we use this machine is gonna be significantly different than traditional rotary. So let's jump into how to load the pad. Um, our panel that we have here has already had the defects sanded out. So now we're ready to load our pad. We've selected a coarse wool pad for this specific operation today. Keep in mind there are different pads you can choose from for compounding. If you want more information on that, be sure to check out our other video on wool versus foam and which pad is right for the application that you're using. Again, for this application, we're gonna go with a coarse wool pad. Again, this is significantly different than a rotary system. With traditional rotary systems, we wanna put our compound directly on the panel, but that's gonna be different with a random orbital system. With random orbital, we actually wanna make sure we season our pad if it's brand new, or if it's a pad that's been used before, we can use the simple four dot system. And that's where we would put four dots of compound on the pad and we'd be ready to go. Since this is a brand new pad, I'm gonna show you how to get this thing seasoned. We always wanna shake up our compound to make sure everything's nice and mixed together. And then once that's fully mixed, we're simply gonna put a swirl of material all the way around. The reason we're doing this is we wanna fully load all of the fibers with compound before we start polishing. Now that we have it loaded, we're ready to get it on the panel and get this thing seasoned. So one other quick tip when using a random orbital system versus rotary is we have to keep the rotation of the head in mind. So with a normal rotary system, since it's only spinning, we tend to push the compound out towards the edges, and I'm sure many of you have even seen it sling, which is why a lot of people wear aprons. When we're using a random orbital system, it's actually gonna tend to draw the material towards the center, which is why we wanna make sure we get this nice and loaded before we start. As we're using this system, we wanna make sure we keep it nice and flat, where with a traditional rotary, we tend to go at a little bit of an angle. We don't wanna do that with this, and we also don't wanna to put too much pressure. We wanna allow both types of rotation to occur, both the spinning style of this head and also the oscillation of the head. If we push too hard, we may stop one of those two rotations, and we're not gonna get the full effect that the tool was designed for. Now that we have this loaded and ready to go, we're ready to start compounding. Now that we've made our first pass and cleaned up to see how we're doing, we're ready to keep compounding. Since we've already loaded this pad once, we don't need to do that big swirl like we did before to wet out the entire pad. It takes significantly less compound. We can simply put four dots in a circle and we're ready to get going again. Now as you watch me 
compound this panel, notice the pattern and the way that I move across it. So what we recommend is going in first an east-west or north-south pattern with about 50% overlap, almost as if you were painting this panel. And then once you finish going all the way across, we're gonna change direction and go the other way across the panel. That ensures that we didn't miss any spots and we're getting a nice even finish across the entire panel. All right, we've finished compounding, and at this point, we'd be ready to move on to polish. A few other quick notes is, first, we can talk about the speed of the machine. Always be sure to check whatever compounds you're using or polishes to make sure you're setting your machine to match what it recommends on the bottle. For compounding, we typically recommend around 4,000 RPMs, and then you could move up from there as needed. And once you move on to polishing, start around 4,000 and then you can move your speed down as needed. Another note, you may see little tick marks when you're compounding with a random orbital system that you may not be used to seeing when using a rotary. Some people will mistake those for DA marks and think that they need to compound even further. That's just due to the, the dual action motion that this tool has. Um, you can ignore those tick marks and move right on to the next step there's no need to go over that with compound again. Other than that, remember to make sure you do nice overlapping passes. Again, you can start north-south and make sure your next pass is east to west. Once your pad is fully loaded, we don't need to do that same thing over and over again. We can just use that four drop method. That's plenty of material to have on that pad to continue compounding. Thank you for watching today's video. If you like this content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have additional questions, you can also drop those down in the comments section and we'll answer them as quickly as we can, or you can always reach out to us directly. For more information and more content like this, be sure to check us out at 3M Collision Repair Academy. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.